Hey guys, Adib, Texas Miner, and what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to finish the assembly on the uh, dream box that you're going to be building here. When I first started mining, I had never built a computer before, so I'm going to do my best to explain it in those type of terms um, and make sure that I don't miss anything because I want the everyday person never touched a computer before, never seen the inside of a computer for, before, to be able to build a mining rig and start their, uh, to start increasing their residual monthly income. All right, so we got our motherboard right here. We're gonna pull this out, lift it up, pull it back, and then you're gonna take your CPU. All right, remember that triangle in the corner. That triangle in the corner is going to fit right where that, you see the triangle? You're going to match up the triangles. That's how you know it's on there, right? Alright. Then we're going to take this back down. Make sure that this goes underneath it. Underneath that screw. And then you're going to bring this up and around take this bad boy off. Then what you're going to do next is take this this I'm just making there's no right way to put this on, but I'm just making sure that the CPU cord will be able to reach cuz then we're going to take this off. And then we're going to unhook it from there and put it on the CPU fan one. Okay. So now we're going to pop this in. All four sides. Now that we have our CPU installed as with the fan, what we're going to do is we're going to put in this stick of RAM right here like this. Make sure these are popped out. And then you'll hear the click sound on that one. All right. So if you're like me and you've never made a computer in your life, then you're going to need a walkthrough of these cords and what they are. So you're going to get a bag full of cor uh, cords, and these are the ones that you'll, this is what you'll need out of that bag. You're going to need one CPU power cable. You're going to need two of these SATA power cables. Then you're going to have one of, this is a very important cord. This is going to add, allow, add extra power to your motherboard because these are high power rigs. They draw a lot of power, as you know. And then, of course, your power cord. And then this is one, two, three, four PCIe. Type 4 
uh, power cords. These are going to be going into your motherboard, or I mean, I'm sorry, into your GPUs at, t at the top. Let me get one so I can show you real quick. So if you if you're going to be using one of these 1070s, then you're going to need two. One of these cords does one GPU. Okay. Uh, I even on my other rig, I don't have it here because I'm going to run five 1070s and then one 1060. There's a special power adapter that will let you put six 1070s together. So sometimes uh, a GPU may only require one of those. So if you're going to run six, for example, I run mainly RX 470s, eight, the eight gigabyte, the Sapphire Mining Edition, dedicated to mining, and each each one of those just requires one power cable to it. So I only need three PCIe power cables. Now I'm going to bring the rig back into the picture and I'm going to start to show you exactly where each one of these goes. Matter of fact, I'm just going to get, get the power supply out right now. No, I'm not. Alright, so the first step is going to be Getting your motherboard cable. That's the first one. We'll make them all neat later on. Now we're going to get our CPU and it's going to say type 4. And they're all special shapes. So you really, they won't even let you put them into the wrong slot. So, and then the this CPU power cable is going to go right here. Once you do that, I want to show you guys next the, this is very important that you don't miss this step. This is going to add extra power to the motherboard. And then you're going to put one end right in here and then the other end all the way over there. So one end right there. This other end. that are going to be your PCIe cores. They'll say it on the side. PCIe, these are going to go into your GPUs.
And then you're gonna put your two SATA cables in there. you'll put your power cord on the other side. Okay, if you haven't done so already, make sure that your spaces are drilled, just like we did with the tap and die over there. Pretty sure that I said that it was gonna need, need to happen, but just in case, I just wanna make sure that everybody is here. So, uh, this is my last frame, and I've ran out of these pieces, but your frame, kit will come complete with enough of these. I just lost them because I was unorganized. However, I just uh, ran the tap through that and threaded it myself. So that, that'll work too. I just, this one is more professional. Okay. All right. Now you're going to take these and place them up front it's gonna go the farthest okay so if we're at we're at it looking like this the farthest one is gonna be number one two and the closest one nearest is gonna be six one two three four five six so it's gonna go over here it's gonna to want to go over these wires Take number two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect our power supplies. First we're going to take our the SATA cable. We're going to connect it to these right here. That's why we do two of these so that you can get these last two stragglers. And if you're going to run Windows, then you're going to attach your Windows hard drive to this power cord as well. But I'm a big ethos guy, like I said. And the reason why is because you can run the whole operating system on a 16 gigabyte 3.0 USB drive. Now we're going to take these over here. My least important is the GTX one. So first I want to get, I'll, I'll run to the store when I have time. Right now it's traffic hour. Our, our highways in, in the Dallas DFW area 
one of the best in my in the country, in my opinion. But during rush hour, do not want to get caught in that, especially going the wrong way. Good night. All right, we got all of them mounted. All right, guys. So we've finished plugging in our PCIe power cords and all we're going to need to do now is plug our USB. I run Ethos and I'll show you guys on another video how to uh, run an Ethos system on a 16 gigabyte 3.0 hard drive. It really cuts down cost. All I, ha all I don't have is my gigabyte plugged in here because I need to run to the hardware store and get one of these PCIe extension cords. So I just plugged my my USB onto into the side over there, and and that's a wrap. We've we've fully installed the hardware that we need to do, and gone through all the steps in order to go online. Our next step, I'm going to show you guys, is how to boot into Ethos and program your wallet and get connected to the iMine Ethereum Classic because I believe in its future potential and its development group behind it. It has a much more organized development system than say Bitcoin. Bitcoin's problem is that it's very it's very hard to get everybody to agree to one thing. To whereas Ethereum Classic, we have ESIPs. And hey, ESIP 10 or 1017, I want to say, is going to happen in the next two or three days. And that's going to be the, the start of a first era. Big, big things coming for Ethereum Classic. I'm excited about it. And that is why we're connecting to an ETC nano pool. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Hey, if you guys like the video, make sure to smash the like button and go follow me on Twitter, Texas underscore minor, and subscribe to our newsletter, of course, cryptocurrency.market forward slash newsletter. I'll see you guys on the next video.